Almost a decade on from William Tyrrell's disappearance, a major development is in the works. Police have handed down a brief of evidence to the New South Wales Director of Public Prosecutions, recommending the three-year-old's foster mother be charged, alleging she covered up his accidental death. It's the closest police have come to laying a criminal charge since he went missing in 2014. Let's bring in criminologist and former detective Terry Goldsworthy, who joins us from the Gold Coast. Terry, nice to see you. What more do we know? Well, look, at this point in time, the details are fairly scant in terms of the evidence the police are relying on. Um, you know, what we do know is this has been going on now for nine years. There's been uh, coronial hearings in relation to it. There's been coercive hearings in the New South Wales Crime Commission. Um, so there would be a lot of information the police have. There would be a lot of evidence uh, they would have in terms of circumstantial evidence because, of course, no remains or no bodies being found. Mm. So the particulars uh, will be interesting because they're talking about two charges. One is pervert the course of justice, which is a more serious charge. It's 14 years. And the other charge is misconduct with the corpse, which is a two-year imprisonment offence. So it would be interesting to see what uh, evidence they're putting forward. Those charges, of course, haven't yet been laid. Is it unusual for this to even be a prospect when a body hasn't been found? Look, no, it's not. I mean, uh, we've had plenty of examples. Uh, you know, Daniel Morecambe's uh, an example there. I mean, they did find some remains there, but even if they hadn't, they would have charged that fellow. So. Uh, look, they're probably at a stage where their investigation is frustrated. They're not going to get any further information or go forward anymore. And that's why uh, generally you will see police forward a brief to a DPP for them to have a look at it in terms of uh, case law, legal opinion, et cetera, to see if they think there's a reasonable prospect of conviction. Um, so they may have a prima facie case, but ultimately they need to be able to prove any criminal charges beyond a reasonable doubt. And of course, we have the presumption of innocence till that's done. So the DPP may turn around and say, no, they don't think there's sufficient evidence there to successfully mount a case. And mm. you don't want to go charging someone with a deficient case because that may affect your ability to do anything later if further evidence comes forward. It has been a slow process, as we know, nearly a decade, and William's foster mother has always maintained her, her innocence. How are things going to play out from this point on? What's, what's likely to happen from now? Well, the DPP, if the reports the media are accurate, has the report now, they'll have to consider whether they think that the elements of the offences, uh, the factual evidence that needs to be proven, is contained within the brief. Um, that will take some time, I would think. I don't think we'll see any kind of result there for a number of months at least. Mm. Uh, this is a high-profile case. It has substantial media attention. Um, they're not going to rush a decision that may be problematic later. They'll take their time, uh, get some experts within the DPP to look at it in terms of homicide law, pervert course of justice type cases, and make a decision as to whether they think they should go ahead or not. All right. Uh, Terry, great to get your insights this morning. It's a case that a lot of people have a lot of interest in. Mm. We appreciate you.